What's going on guys? Today I'm bringing you a Guardian Fighter DPS build video. Uh, let's get into it. First we're going to talk about our stats, where our points would go into. Um, I put my points into Strength and Charisma. This is more for late game, so to say, just because of when you're in late game, your companion really matters a lot. So obviously the more Charisma you have, the more companion stat bonus you get. So the com with your bondings, you'll get more stats out of your companion than you would compared to having more dex or more constitution. And I also put my points into strength for more damage and stamina regen so I can keep my shield up in case I need to block and attack. Next is our beats. Um, obviously, you go down conquer, but you want to start off on your hero. Um, 3 out of 3 in strength focus, 3 out of 3 in toughness, 3 out of 5 in action surge, 3 out of 3 in armor specialization, 5 out of 5 in powerful attack, 3 out of 3 in weapon mastery. Um, some of these things are optional. You can optimize them the way you want. Obviously, a build, this build most likely is meant for me or and for others as long as you can find it viable. Also, keep in mind that if you're a beginner this build will not work for you um, a lot of people don't understand that you need to have everything situated before you actually start doing damage on a guardian fighter you could probably start off real low maybe for like many like small um, bosses like maybe the low dungeons you'll be doing good with it but like at the end if you're like a low item level without the situated campaigns and gear and all that probably won't work for you and also, this build isn't finished yet. Um, I still have a lot of things to work on, so gear-wise and stuff like that. So what you want to do is go up Conquer Path, um, 5 out of 5 and take measure. When you're in kit, gain temporarily hit points equal to 5% of your maximum hit points. This works with, with Raffle Warrior. When you have temporary hit points, you do 15% more damage. So usually when you pop into the fray, you'll get temporary hit points anyways which isn't bad because you get a 15% damage buff then you go 5 out of 5 in jagged blades when you critically strike your foe they begin bleeding oh, staggering challenge gain 20% damage bonus to griffin's wrath when this target has been struck by a staggering challenge and power of griffin's wrath so when you hit somebody with griffin's wrath you get 20% damage buff for your next attack tactical superiority deal 5% more damage and combat superiority grants an additional 5% more damage and Reckless Attacker, when struck in combat, you gain Reckless Attacker. Reckless Attack increases your damage by 5%, and your critical chance by 2%. Reckless Attack lasts 10 seconds and stacks up to 5 times, so that is a 25% damage buff and a 10% increase in your crit chance. Um, the crit chance really won't matter once you're really, you know, high end. You'll have max crit anyways. Then your rest of your points go into Plate Agility or whatever you so choose, but you still need to unlock Staying Power. So either or armor, baphomet, or plate agility. I chose plate agility just for more deflection. Staying power, weapon master strike. Now also reduce your target's mitigation your counter powers by 10%. So basically, when you use weapon master, which I'll show you, it it basically allows you to do 10% more damage to the target you hit. And fight on and counter cooldowns are reduced by 10%. <coughs> you can put this last points to wherever you feel like I just like it here just because I, I can get my rotation done faster your power that you mainly want to be using is villain's menace uh, lunging strike and for threat griffin's wrath this is for solo this is for AOE attacks fighters recovery in case you get low in health up to you um, knee breaker is good when you want to just use at wills and not encounters which I'll talk about in a second. <clears throat> nice challenge is one of your main encounters for solo bossing. Combat superiority gives you more damage, obviously. The more an enemy hits you, you deal 5% additional damage to them. They deal 5% less damage, and you end this stacks. Plus, it com um, it combines with the feat of tactic superiority, which will give you 5% more damage. So <clears throat> that would be obviously five eight plus five 13 percent more damage 
Um, Cresting Surge is your main at well, especially for solo bossing. Uh, Weapon Master Strike is good for AoE attacks and also it applies your debuff to the target and to the fray. I always use into the fray unless there's another Guardian Fighter with us that's a buff debuff build. I'll let him use into the fray and I'll use Anvil of Doom. Um, Steel Blitz for AoE. Um, then go down. Once you're in game, or you know you have a good group and you're set, you use Shield Warrior's Wrath, which basically gives you more damage when you block an attack again. But right now, since I'm not in game and I don't have max crit or neither there, I use Steel Grace. It gives me movement speed, crit chance, and deflection chance. You become lighter on your feet in combat, increases your run speed by 10%, and gain additional precision with your weapons, increasing your def deflection chance and critical chance. <coughs> Now to boons, for my guild boons, I use power, defense, and mount speed bonus. But <clears throat> at this time, at this point in the game, you would use hit point bonus just because of paladins that you run with. If you're running a good group, they have Aura of Courage on. Aura of Courage grants you bonus damage for the more HP you have. For Sharna, I'm running Dark Fey Hunter, Fey Precision, Elven Haste. This really doesn't matter. I have no idea if it does or not. But to me, it doesn't matter. I never use it. Um, so I just go for the 20,000 hit points just in case I get low in HP. Or something almost damn near one shots me. And then Elven Shuri, when you kill a foe, you gain 135 power for 45 seconds. Dread Ring, I use. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. But you gain 250 power and 250 movement. Um, life steal, resistance is ignored, and once again, I don't, I don't use this at all. So I use this in case I get low in HP. And then rampaging madness. This is really good. As you can see, you gain at 50 stacks. You proc madness. You gain 4,000 power, 4,000 life steal, and 4,000 regen for 10 seconds. Ice one down. I went basically. Would you call this the middle or the bottom? Um, 400 combat advantage bonus, 400 stamina gain, 2% crit severity, 200, 2,000 power based on how much stamina I'm missing, and which is bounty chance to gain 10% action points when killing a target. For underdark, I used to get 400 power, 400 crit, 10% combat advantage damage, um, regen stamina fast of 5%, and Different damage against demons, such as Orcus, etc. For Tyranny, I do 1600 hit points instead of 400 power, which I need to change, in all honesty, because this is stupid. Um, 400 crit, 400 armor pen, 400 life steal, 2 out of 3 in crit severity, and 4% in life steal. Maze Engine, I use 5 Steel Life Steel Severity, 400 Combat Advantage Bonus, 3% Action Point Gain Faster, and Baphomet's Might. When striking foe, you have a chance to gain 2000 crit for 6 seconds. Elemental Evil, I will use Wave of Force, Heart of Stone, Seeing Aggression, and Gale of Retribution, which grants you 24,000 hit points and 1000 crit since I'm not maxed out on crit yet. This, I will never finish this campaign, so. This will always be 2 out of 3. But I use 2% life severity, 400 stamina gain, 2000 based on how much, 2000 recovery based on how much stamina you're missing. Um, when you kill a foe, you have a chance to, to deal up to 2000 fire damage to all nearby targets. For Cloaked Ascendancy, I have Demoralize, which emits an aura I guess or whatever you want to call it that stuns targets for 4 seconds um, 2% crit strike severity and 500 life steal with um, vision of beyond jungles of cholt I don't think I finished this because I'm too lazy but I don't. I know I need one more boon so it doesn't really matter um, 1000 power 750 defense and Obviously, 5% damage against dinosaurs in case I ever go back to jungles of Ch to kill stuff. 
and Lingering Curse. Now to Ravenloft. I haven't finished this because I was banned and um yeah I haven't done anything ever since I got unbanned which I don't want to talk about that it's stupid um obviously just five percent damaging is undead because everything in Ravenloft is undead and that's the current mod obviously this is going to change up once mod 15 comes out I have no idea I know the mobs there are trolls and frost giants and stuff like that I think so far that I've seen and I think there's some undead as well so this might stay the same now to gear <coughs> I have a plethora of options um, you can obviously use whatever you feel like but for weapon enchants I run a parallel fate touch this is really good for mostly everything um, it's really good for AOE and solo bossing I know if you want to one phase a uh, target on a boss fight you will use dread just because of for max crit severity but the phase all around better you do an additional 27% of weapon damage as psychic damage with your powers also your counter powers siphon away 20% of your target's damage this damage is converted into 20% more damage for you so basically if you hit a target they deal 20% less damage and that and you deal 20% more damage to them and this can affect up to three targets and basically it has basically zero cooldown timer this lasts for 20 seconds and may only happen once every 20 seconds so as soon as this procs it doesn't stop procking because well it does after 20 seconds but you really have no cooldown timer because it counteracts each other and then for offensive slots, I use Brutals, Power, and Crit. Um, this can be changed depending on your um, preference. You can use Black Ice, which gives you Power, Crit, and Recovery. But I like using Brutals. For defensive slots, at this game right now, you would use Radiant Enchantments just because, like I said, the more HP the more Aura of Courage bonus damage you get because of the pallies you have around you. If you don't have a pally, then I don't know what you're doing. You should always be running with a pally, especially at in-game dungeons. For your main artifacts, you'd want to use anything Soul Sight Crystal and or um, Wheel of Elements. Or if you're, you know, want to be special you can use the decanter of atropole um, I can show you that real quick there it is grant you the boon of atropole buff for 14 seconds this causes your powers to deal an additional 1200 damage on each hit each time the damage is dealt the way of duration of boon of atropole is increased by one second and your damage is increased by one percent up to total of 10 times so basically you get almost a 30 second buff of damage and you gain 10 percent more damage for I think it's 15 seconds in total or 14 seconds at the end of the day but <clears throat> I digress I wouldn't use it in my opinion but some people say they like it better than the wheel of elements honestly to me I barely use the wheel of elements anyways so yeah for your two freebie slots obviously because the orca set is always the best set apparently right now you'd want to use anything that gives you power and crit or power and armor pen whatever you're missing or you can get a, a what is that I forgot what it's called fragment of key of stars um, this gives you so when you actually have it to mythic it'll give you power crit and armor pen which is the best three stats for a DPS class anyways as of right now that I know of. Now on to companions. Um, I don't have a tiger. Everybody runs a chillin tiger which which on the start of combat your run speed is increased and so is your damage by 5% for 25% for 25 seconds sorry which means obviously you gain a bonus of 5% more damage in the beginning of a fight 
most uh, group fights and AOE fights, mobs, trash mobs don't last longer than 25 seconds. They probably last like 10 seconds in honesty, or even less. This is really good, especially if you can get 5% bonus damage at the start of your rotation. But I do not have that, so poohoo, and my build is still being worked on. Um, I run the Bronzewood Raid Ring and a Bull Ring for the missing armor pen that I have right now. And then I have the Ernie of Bilal, Air Archon, and the War Boar. This gives you an increased damage against marked targets by 3%. At Epic, it goes up to 5%. And then, obviously, Morningwood. Yeah. <laughs> He gives you 25% combat advantage damage and 2.5% crit severity. It just doesn't go any higher once you rank it up to legendary. The only thing you get at legendary is companion rating bonus, which is 16, 8, 4, 2, and then 1. Every time you have a uh, one companion at legendary, your first companion, it'll go up to 16%. The second companion you get will go up to 8%, so it's halved every time. Next companion will be 4%. Next companion will be 2, and then the last one will be 1. So you're gaining a 30% um, companion rating bonus for your primary summon companion. So if <coughs> if this companion had 8,000 crit, I would be getting a bonus of... I'd be getting a bonus of 2,400 more crit, so that'd be 10,000 crit. <coughs> or around that ballpark, probably a little bit less. With my bondings proc as well, which these aren't at legendary, I mean not legendary, at rank 14, then it'd be a different situation. <coughs> now for the rotation, um, it's pretty simple, you just when you before you get into a group fight, you run in, you mark any targets around you, you use your enter the fray, you lunge at them, and then you pop your enforced threat, and you just start swinging. Or you could switch it up a bit, mark your targets, whatever you feel like, run into the group, swing away, lunge for the bonus damage, which you already gain, and there you have it. That's mostly your AOE. That's all you're doing half the time. <coughs> now here's where it gets a little complicated. Um, this is for solo targeting. Um, basically for bosses and stuff like that. You want to run to your target, mark them. If you have your daily, obviously you pop it. And that's basically it. You have seen five mil with just a regular, just regular old me, not fully, you know, um, procked up, doing all sorts of damage with the whole group. This is just me fighting a regular dummy. Okay, guys, I'm back. All right, so I got my daily and I'm ready to go. So what you want to do is, hey, companion, could you stop, please? Okay, so what you want to do? is mark your target, run in, swing away, pop your daily, your enforced threat, your nice challenge with your soul sight, and then you just swing away. And that's mostly it. It's pretty simple, but you only have a small window of 10 seconds to do um, a burst damage. That's mainly what this what any Guardian Fighter build is, is just constant burst damage that you do over time. Um, this isn't a consistent base damage, no Guardian Fighter, unless you're like playing with DCs with obviously Hasting Light, which reduces your cooldowns by a ton, Paladins that have, um, I forgot what it's called, to proc your cooldowns as well. They'll mainly help you out. <coughs> okay, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys really made it all the way to the end, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you all enjoyed this build video. Hopefully it helped you guys. And if you guys have any questions, um, I probably missed some stuff, please leave a comment down below and tell me. Now for that, I'm out.